Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. I am so excited to be here with the amazing, the awesome, the beautiful Jada Selner. She is a best-selling author, business coach, TEDx speaker, and host of the Lead With Love podcast. Now, I can tell you a whole lot of things about Jada, and I'm going to keep telling you some more here. Number one, if you're not looking on YouTube, you need to go there because she's got the most awesome hat and smile and beautiful face that you will ever see. She's also been featured in O, the Oprah magazine. Yes, I know. Jealous, definitely, because Oprah's my best friend. She just doesn't know it yet. Um, She's also been featured in Forbes and the Wall Street Journal. She's been on CBS's The Doctor's TV and on the cover of Women's World. Jada is the founder of several companies, including the company she sold in 2016 called Simple Green Smoothies. Yes, you all have heard of that one. That company grew to over $1 million and 1 million followers in just the first two years. So you can imagine that Jada is sought after by founders like you and me. She provides the strategic roadmap that you need to execute your vision and grow your business to the next level. Jada, thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm excited. Thank you for having me, Kathy. (laughs) Oh, you're very welcome. So Jada, could you start us off by just giving us some insight into how you built that amazing Simple Green Smoothie and how you got to where you are today? And um, we're excited to hear about your journey. Yeah, well, being that this is the Dare to Leap podcast, um, you know, it's not a one straight line. It's several, it's several hops and a skip and go under and through and around to, to uh, get to that place of, of success in business. Um, but for me, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for over 12 years, and I actually became an entrepreneur out of necessity. I was a first time mom, um, newly married to my husband, and uh, we moved to Kauai in 2008, which was at the height of the economic recession. (laughs) Uh, We didn't know that we were in a recession when we made the leap over from you know, Los Angeles, California to Kauai, but we arrived and we were trying to find work. My husband was a musician, a rock star. And I'm like, Hey, you need to make money for our baby. (laughs) So he he got a real real estate license. Um, He actually failed the first time that he took the test, but he got his real estate license. And and the dream, the vision was that he would do, you know, timeshare vacation sales in Kauai, which is what my bonus dad um, did. And my mom got to be a stay at home mom. And so that was, that was my dream. Like, can I stay at home like my mom and you work and make a lot of money than more than an actor or musician, which is what we've, you know, been all our lives. And, um, nobody was hiring. Nobody was, was hiring, especially someone who didn't have any experience during that time. And so we really had to build out of necessity. So with no one hiring, we had to create our own job, our own economy. And so we started a brick and mortar business called Little Sprouts Playhouse. And it was a learning and playing center for little kids. You know, our daughter was just a toddler at this time. Um, My husband and I had no business starting a business. Neither of us have college degrees. And um, we didn't go to school to help like, you know, little people. We just, we were new parents just trying to figure things out and throwing spaghetti at the wall. And so we started this business just so we could stop depleting our savings um, during that time. And that was kind of my first initiation into entrepreneurship. I was Googling my way to how do you write a business plan? plan. You know, we, we rented a, a lease, right? You know, I always think it's so fascinating when people who build online businesses get so caught up in like what it costs, like the monthly cost, right? To kind of have all the technical <laughs> yes. tools 
tools and pieces and they're like, I can't afford to keep paying these, these, you know, software. And it's just like, if you have a brick and mortar business, you, you are committed to pay that lease right up front before you have any customers walking in the door. And I remember our daughter was the worst marketer for our business because she didn't want to share us with the other little kids. So <laughs> kids would come into uh, Little Sprouts Playhouse and be like, welcome to Little Sprouts Playhouse. And our daughter would be pushing them right out the door. She was very, <laughs> it was a strong-willed child. Like, you know, she was uh. the, the biter, the hitter. Like I had to hover over her at play dates. Um, and so my husband and I, we were, we were doing this brick and mortar business, just trying to figure things out. Um, we actually, it really strained our relationship because we were fighting over money that we didn't have. We were both wearing so many hats. Like I was, you know, creating little email pages, just trying to figure stuff out, emails back in the day with all these different vibrant colors. And my husband was, you know, he was doing music classes for the little kids and I would just be bossing him around and like, do this, do that. We were also <laughs> changing toddlers, diapers. Like we, we just, we had our hands full and we were just fighting yeah. over money that we didn't have and just trying to figure it out and actually, um, we struggled so much in that business that we had to move out of the place where we were renting and actually move in to the building where we were operating our business. And I remember um, there was this um, uh, parent who was like, hey, uh, Julie said that, you know, you guys live here. And my husband was like, yeah, we do. And the dad was just like beat red from just like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I thought she was making that up, you know, because they would kind of see like our bed hidden in this like random closet. And um, so yeah, that was my first leap into entrepreneurship was really trying to, to figure stuff out. Um, we couldn't get the business like off and running. Like we were able to kind of survive for a little bit, but we ended up closing down that company, liquidating all the assets. And we moved from Kauai back to California into my husband's parents' house for six months. So hashtag worst case scenario is that that was the first big leap into entrepreneurship and kind of the the building ground to building that business. So I, I wanted to share that versus going into like, here's how we built something successful because there's a lot of strikes that happen before you actually hit a home run. Jada, thank you so much for sharing that because so many people, uh, guilty right here, look at you. And, um, you know, I didn't know you until Simple Greens, I knew about Simple Green Smoothies. And I didn't know about that backstory. So I assumed, well, she was just immediately successful. Overnight success. So thanks for sharing that because uh, my belief is that everyone has a story like that. It might not be the first thing that happens. It might be the second or third thing. And you got that over with right away. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I know it didn't feel good at the time, but did you learn a lot of lessons from that? Oh, for sure. And, and that wasn't the first um, or the last leap of, you know, there were, there were many more milestones before Simple Green Smoothies actually took off. But I, I think that the lesson that I learned starting a brick and mortar business with my husband was one, we never want to run a business together again. <laughs> Like we, we are I'm with you on doing, that. <laughs> we're better at doing our own creative ventures and just like supporting each other's dreams. Um, another thing that I, I learned was just this confidence that I could create something out of nothing. I, you know, I yes. was always the dreamer, the big, I always had lots of ideas, no follow through, you know, I would buy tons of, you know, GoDaddy domains and, you know, I'd get this close, create a business card of a business that doesn't exist, you know, just kind of do all these little micro steps to feel like I was getting closer to starting a business. So to, to kind of have the, the forced hand of having to figure it out and, and provide for my family really built the confidence for my husband and I that one, we could live somewhere we've never lived before. We only lived in Hawaii. 
or visited Kauai before we moved there. Um, my my parents um, lived moved out there like maybe three years before us, and so it, it gave us this sense of adaptability as a family, right? Like I, I was I was used to moving a lot growing up, but my husband wasn't. That was a really big leap for him to kind of start over and leave what was comfortable to him. So I think for yeah. us, that big lesson was like, we can do some really hard stuff together as a family and still be together on the other side. Cause there were definitely, the D word was brought up during that season of like, I could do this life without you, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think we just grew a lot stronger and we also built skill sets along the way that would then help us build our next entrepreneurial ventures. Mm, that is so powerful. And you guys survived it. And I'm so glad to hear that you grew stronger because that that's what's going to happen. It's either going to break you or make you. And it sounds like it really made you yeah. a stronger family. Congratulations on yeah. that. And for him, uh, you know, I, I don't know anybody that I would actually call a rock star. Um, congratulations on being married to a rock star. That has to be good and bad. I know <laughs> probably better than on, on the good side, but um, my best friend actually is married to a musician and he still, I mean, doesn't have a job has never, ever had a job. And, you know, in the pandemic, musicians aren't working hardly at all and yeah. he hasn't been so um, that can really be challenging and yet you guys made it work so yeah. you have to be really proud of yourselves with that yeah for sure yeah so want to talk about the next leap or what it, whichever next leap you want to talk about yeah um so from there you know we um we landed in california and i was living with my you know my in-laws and there was like T over 10 of us in the house and my husband's Filipino. So they're used to like everybody squeeze in sardine style, but I was losing my ish. Like I was just like <laughs> doing anything in my power to not be in the house. I would, you know, take my daughter wherever I could. I'd be eating Taco Bell in the car just so I didn't have to go inside the house. And, um, you know, but I, what I really wanted to do was kind of figure out the plan C, D or E, right? Like, okay, so that the real estate timeshare thing didn't work out. The brick and mortar didn't work out. So what could we do? next. Um, and so I started interning with my husband's aunt, um, Annie Tootie, and she, um, she was trying to get everyone to start a business online. Like, you know, she would do little seminars and webinars at like family, you know, gatherings and things like that. And, and no one really took interest, but I'm here kind of this like outsider. And I was like, I'd like to know what you do. And so I actually ended up um, interning with her. I said, could I come? She lived in Beverly Hills and we were in Northern California and she lived in Southern California. And I said, could I come and just like intern and watch what you do. Like, I will pick up your dry cleaning. I'll get you coffee, those type of things. Like I just wanted to like really literally look over her shoulder and see how she did what she did. Cause she had a million dollar company, um, sending out emails to people. You know, she had an e sign is what you, you know, called it back in those days. Yeah. <laughs> and right. I, I rem and she let me come. And, um, so I was an intern for her. I stayed with in her house for the summer. Um, I remember my husband and my daughter dropping me off and then like going back and I just, I just soaked everything up from her. And I remember this one very specific moment where, you know, she was sitting in the dining room table. She had her laptop out, um, just these beautiful, gorgeous views. You know, she like had one of those houses that was inside the like architectural magazines, like very fancy schmancy. And she's like, Jada, I'm going to send this email right now to this email list that I have. And after I send this email, I will be able to buy a car in full, like $30,000 type of full, you know? And so for me, I was like, I want to learn how to do that. I want to learn how to send emails that could buy a car in full. And so um, I just soaked everything up that she was doing. And I knew I'm like, how do I start like an email newsletter. That was kind of the, the, the obsession of like, at this time I had read um, the four hour work week, Tim Ferriss's four hour work week. So I'm like kind of trying to build all these pieces together. 
And the one thing that I was looking for was I wanted to do something that I was passionate about. So that was actually my heart. The most challenging part was, okay, there's this online business thing. You send emails, but like, what am I actually passionate about? What would I love to do? And so that was kind of my hunt. Um, I ended up starting a parenting newsletter. And with that parenting Mm. newsletter, I needed, a, I needed a header, right? I needed a newsletter header. And so I reached out to a friend of mine who was in a mom's group with me when Zoe was just born. And um, uh, her name was Jen Hansard. And I was like, hey, can you design this newsletter for me? How much is it? She's like, it's normally $150, but for the friend's discount, I'll do it for $75. And so she designed it out. And I was talking about like, potty training and um, drinking green smoothies and just like healthy habits and things as a family. And in me kind of sharing my vision and ideas with Jen, she was like, I've always wanted to start a parenting blog and I just love what you're up to. Would you consider partnering? And so that's actually where our partnership started was um, to be able to start a, a parenting blog together. So Simple Green Smoothies was actually never supposed to be a business. Like the intent, the big vision that we were going after was to make a lot of money as a mom blogger. So that was basically like my second entrepreneurial leap was like, okay, let's figure out how to make money online with a parenting blog. So that's really where that was kind of the, the, the pre, the pregame to Simple Green Smoothies. Uh Oh, that is so interesting. And one of the things I love about that story that you just told is you reached out to somebody else and said, I need help. And Jada, I feel like, especially we women have a very difficult time doing that. Do you find that to be true? You know, I'm trying to think if that's true for me, because I've always, <laughs> I, like, I'm really thinking about, I think it is very challenging yeah, for most women. And I feel the way that I grew up, I had to be resourceful and figure things out on my Mm. own. Because again, right, I reached out to Annie Tootie, can I intern with you? Right. So I was actually very proactive, like, I don't know how I'm going to make money. I don't know how I'm going to support my family, but I got to figure something out. So I actually leaned on, I think that's probably one of my hidden superpowers that I don't think I was even aware of, of, um, while I was building this online blog, I would, I would go into meetup groups, mom meetup groups and say, Hey, is there anyone who would want to do childcare swaps so that I could work on the blog I while my husband that. was working, you know? So for me, if I didn't have money, then I'm going to figure out how to trade, how to like utilize what I can to get what I need to get done. And I think that's something that I would say people could borrow from me, right? Is like how, if yeah. you don't have what you need, if you don't have the person or you don't have the the child care, like where can you get creative and, and barter with people old school style? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. And that word proactive, that's actually one of the things that I try to teach um, women that I work with is you have to be proactive because if you aren't, no one else is going to be for you. So it sounds like you learned it out of necessity. Yeah. And it's, I agree that it's one of your superpowers. So those who are listening, who are like, how do I get that ability? Any suggestions for people? Yeah. I, I think a really big thing is building resiliency around rejection and failure. Mm -hmm. Just that's the piece because I could have thrown in the towel after the brick and mortar business, right? Like I'm coming back home to live with my husband's in-laws with a new baby. And, and I could have just stopped my entrepreneurial path there and like left with, you know, my tail between my legs. And I actually had a friend who had a brick and mortar business in Kauai to shut it down and, and went to become a paralegal and kind of went down that path, right? She kind of like, nope, I will never right? Like it's like something happens, we fail or we get rejected. I will never put myself in that situation again. And for me, I was like, I just got to keep going. So I'm like, when the parenting newsletter happened, I shared with all my friends and family, because that's the only audience that I had was like, hey, we moved from Kauai to California. Here's what I'm doing today. And there was definitely 
of fear and and um, a hidden embarrassment of like, they're gonna be thinking like, oh, what is Jada up to now? And I was like, I don't care. I, like, I have to put it out there. You know, I did care. Like, I, like I, that thought crossed my mind, but that I think that's, you know, what are things that you can do to get, get comfortable with rejection and failure and actually chase rejection? Like, instead of looking for the win, looking for the outcome as soon as possible, it's like, how many no's can I get? Um, so I think, th I think that's something that's really important is to kind of build up that resiliency of, of asking for something and then being okay with a no, with a rejection. I do this with friendships too. Um, so <laughs> like Jen, Jen Kim and I were really good friends and, um, you know, I I'm really good at like nurturing friendships because I'm okay with people saying no to me several times. So a lot of times people will see someone that they want to be. And so I'm trying to use friendship to just have something a little bit lighter and more rooted on the ground. Yeah, no, I love that <laughs> analogy. I, um, I'm, I'm absolutely intrigued by that analogy. Keep going. Yeah. So with, with friends, you know, especially as we get older, you know, we're not in the same type of environments where it's as easy to make friends. I would make a new friend and I'd have my eye on them. And usually in the beginning, right, when you meet someone and they invite you out for coffee or for, you're kind of like, ah, uh, not, oh, I'm busy. Like, it's not, it's not in the top of your to-do list. Right. And I, I was like, that's okay. You know, if it's okay, I'll just keep asking you until, you know, you there, there's a good time. So from, and I was like, it's, and don't worry, you can say no to me as many times, like that type of thing. So what I, what I'm doing is I'm building the relationship up. Like it's okay if you have a life and it's okay if you say no to me, but I'm going to keep inviting you and, and I'll keep getting the no's. But where most people stop is if someone says no that first time to their first invitation, then they're like, this person doesn't like me. They don't want to be friends with me. The end. And that, and at the end, you don't have any friends. And so I think there's this persistence um, that we have to have in us and be okay if someone's like, no, I can't go to the movies with you. I can't go to the restaurant. I'm like, sometimes it's just timing. And it's schedule and like we, we need to put in the time and put in the reps and the work. And so um, that's a great way to test rejection is inviting people to things like you take the lead um, and experience that sense of, of rejection of someone saying they can't join you for your party, for your date, for your whatever. Um, those things, I apply that same thing into entrepreneurship as well. Oh, I love that so much. That, that is such great advice. Thank you for sharing that. And Jada, I, I, I am very much like you in that I will reach out to, if I, I, I feel like I get like little crushes on people. Like I have a crush on you. You might not know that. So I'm just going to be totally transparent here. I've had a crush on you. Um, and, you know, Jen, actually, I said, Jen, who do you know that I can have on my new podcast? And this was like six months ago. And she's like, well, Jada. And I'm, I'm thinking, oh, Jada, she's such a big deal. And I don't really know her yet, but I really like her. And maybe she'd be on my podcast. So I had all of those really ridiculous thoughts going through my head. And then I reached out to you and you're like, sure. And I was like, oh, she likes me. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jen kind of told me, well, she'll be on just, she'll help just about anybody out. And I'm like, oh, well, that's cool too. <laughs> so um, I totally understand what you're talking about when you say reach out and don't take no for an answer as a rejection. It's just no for right now. Yeah. 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 So great advice. All right. You have so many good stories. Keep them coming, Jada. So what happened mm -hmm. next? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, starting that parenting blog, um, Jen and I were, you know, we were actually spending money. We weren't making any money. So we would do like, you know, giveaways and we'd be buying them out of our own pockets. Um, and one thing that we shared on there. So when I was interning with my aunt, with my husband's aunt, um, she introduced me to my first green smoothie. So I had never had a green smoothie until that time that I interned with her in, in Beverly Hills. And I remember being introduced to that, um, you know, she's like, just taste this. It has avocado and spinach and bananas. I was like, I don't want to drink that. Like, I am not I'm like, <laughs> she's like, I promise it tastes good. And I was like, okay. So I'm like, basically like pinching my nose and like, oh, I drink it. And then it was love at first sip. Like it tasted so good. It was so sweet. I was completely shocked. And, you know, she was saying this was something that, you know, one of her friends was drinking and she drank it for breakfast and lost a lot of weight. And I was like, bing, 
you know, being like a new mom and wanting still carrying, you know, baby weight four years later. I'm like, I, I would like to, I will start drinking green smoothies for breakfast. So it was just this thing that I was, I was doing that I was really excited about. I, you know, I made green smoothies daily for my husband and my daughter. I got my parents hooked. Um, I got Jen, my business partner, like everyone just drinking green smoothies. You're sick, drink a green smoothie. Oh my gosh, you need this blender, that blender, that, you know, so it was just kind of this like exciting obsession behind the scenes. Um, but it was, you know, I would share the recipes that I was making on the parenting blog. And so one of my friends, Mai, she was on Instagram and um, this was 2012, right? So it's like very new, this hot thing. And she I was going like, to say, I didn't even know there was Instagram back then. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, what if you shared your green smoothie recipes on Instagram? And I was like, no, like I'm already on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. We're on Pinterest. Like, you know, we're, we're doing so much already. It just felt like one more to do that I didn't have time or bandwidth for. And so I resisted it for a little bit, but then I went ahead and, and started trying it. And, and she's like, make it, make the name like specific to what the recipes instead of the parenting blog. And so I came up with the name Simple Green Smoothies and just created this Instagram account. And my business partner, Jen, she was like, you can do that. I'm going to keep working on our parenting blog over here. Like, you know, and, and the intention was that we would write an ebook and so that was kind of the thing. You have an e and then you sell an ebook, and then you make a million dollars. And so I had this vision. A million dollars. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's because this is what my aunt, like she sold an ebook yeah. and made a million dollars. I was like, I would like to try. And like, I really thought yeah. that I could make six figures in six months, six figures past I was not six figures, six months passed and no, no money. <laughs> um, but we basically started that Instagram account to help promote this ebook, like green smoothies for kids, right. For our parenting blog, that was kind of the mm, vision. Awesome. And yeah. so I just played around on Instagram and I kind of, I fell in love with the platform, not for the content creation. You know, I had to beg my husband for like an iPhone three or iPhone four. Like I'm like, my, my photos are blurry. And like, I was just taking all the photos <laughs> myself. And, but I loved interacting and engaging with the community. And I think that's a thing that a lot of people miss on social media platforms. They're looking at like, how can I make content so I can get customers so I can make money. And like there, there's a different nuance of actually being a part of the community and the conversation that's happening there. So we grew our Instagram following from my, my friend said, if you fill your feed with all nine photos, I'll give you a shout out. And she gave me a shout out and we went from zero to like 800 followers, which was huge. We were just like so excited and like, oh my gosh. Um, and then I, I went to this, like um, with my friend, we went to this boot camp um, with this Instagram fitness influencer. And I knew that she liked green smoothies. So I actually blended a green smoothie, brought it with her, like, oh, we could get a photo together. And um, so I did this really difficult challenge challenging boot camp class like I don't do that type of intense workout we were like flipping those large um tires and just oh, oh it was no. so intense oh, and I was gosh. like about to so we up hills in San Francisco and down like I was so out of shape we um shout and I think 30 followers she a shout out Jada. And we went Jada. Um, yeah Jada. we will you pause just a second we've got a a little issue yes. with the internet here and it's it can uh, you tell if it's on your side or my side are you getting unstable notice at all if you're not it's okay it's probably on my side when you yeah yeah I think your okay. your your video disappeared for a second and then it came back on yeah, I actually paused my video to see if it would help. Give me just one second. I'm going to okay. actually switch satellites. I'm okay. on satellite internet and see if it helps. Cool. So I will be gone for a second, but I'll be right back. Yeah, okay? totally. Okay, let's see if this is better. And they'll just edit that part out. Okay, cool. Because your voice was real 
crackly and stuff. And, okay. and you were saying really important stuff. So um, <laughs> where you, you were, you, you start where you went to the boot camp. Okay. <laughs> so I, and let me know if I, if I start cutting off again, you sound too. great now. Okay. You sound much better. Okay, great. Yeah. So we headed to the boot camp, and it was the most intense workout. Like I'm not someone that does like hit workouts or high intensity stuff. So we were flipping tires. I was exhausted, sprinting up and down hills in San Francisco. Um, but after I had that green smoothie ready for this fitness influencer on Instagram, and so we, she took a picture. She gave us simple green smoothies, a shout out, and so we went, she's like, y'all know how much I love green smoothies. These green smoothies are so good. Check it out. And so we went from 800 followers to 3000 followers. And I know wow. like, it was really, really exciting. I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. And also what I was seeing was the power of shout outs too, right? Of, and if you also see like the power of shout outs with people you have relationships within. So, so often we're just expecting people to just like recognize us, like give me a shout out. And it's like, no, I actually had a real friendship with my friend, Mai. Um, I went out of my way, got into a car, drove to an outdoor boot camp in San Francisco to meet with this other pay, um, person. And we, we know our, our friend Jen Kim talks about IRL versus URL, right? Like, you know, our in those in, uh, in real life right? Right? relationships with people. And so because that person met me, felt safe enough to like give us a shout out. And from there, it just started kind of, it was just like this um, snowball effect of growth of, I kept finding ways of like, how can I get more shout outs? How can I reach out and connect um, with everyday people who might want to try this green smoothie who are working out or are new moms and just kind of getting people to notice us online um, and without being like, hey, follow us. It would just be like, hey, like compliment implementing them or something like that. And so, you know, we started that Instagram in July of 2012. In December of 2012, we had 30,000 followers on Instagram. And I spent my wow. little thumbs were parting and tapping and, and doing all of that. So that was kind of the, the first big uh, win from all this effort that I'd been putting in over, over these years, right? Like that was after several businesses and like simple green smoothies was, was its own little entity. And in that time of that growth, we realized that, you know what, it's going to be really confusing if people from Instagram, simple green smoothies go to our parenting blog, family sponge. And so my business partner, Jen, she actually built a website just for simple green smoothies in November of that same year. We kind of like hustled and that's like a pivot, right? Like we adjusted instead of just like staying with the parenting blog, we saw an opportunity um, and we were getting some momentum and traction there and we put more time and effort and energy there. And I always say to my clients, you know, double down on what's working, stop what's not. And so we had to like take the pedal off of the parenting blog because we were spending more money than we were making. And it's like, wow, people are paying attention to our green smoothie recipes. Let's double down on this. I love it. So I'm going to tell you, you are so good at this stuff. I just wrote down the three P's that you have shared so far. Want to be proactive, be persistent, and be willing to pivot. Yeah. You're so good. <laughs> 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 that is so exciting. I, I love your story and the way you share it. And one of the things that you said that really stands out for me is when you said you had real relationships. Yeah. And that is more important now than ever, I believe, with um, us all having to be separated and more people than ever going, oh, look at how many friends I have, how many likes I have, but are they real relationships? Because a lot of people say to me, well, I'm really not getting any traction with all those people. Mm, do you have real relationships with them? Yeah. I think that is yeah. so important that you, what you shared there. So thank you so much for that. Yeah. And I would just add to that piece um, when you're thinking of networking or building relationships with people to really think of like, would I want to hang out with this person over dinner? Would I, like, I, would I really, would I want to hang out over dinner with their family? I think <clears throat> for me, 
I can see a lot of people who are influential in my industry, but they're just not like my people. And I'm like, I like, I don't want to be friends with them. If I don't want to be friends with them, then I don't want them to give me a shout out. I don't, cause I don't want to have to owe something to someone that I don't feel genuinely um, like a strong connection to. So I, I really try to build even my network people that I truly genuinely like and want to see win versus just seeing kind of their credentials and their uh, fluence and influence like that, that to me, it's like not enough. Um, I really just have to like them as, as a human being. And so you can find cool, influential, credible people that, that you actually like. Um, and so I, I think that's something to pay attention to versus just trying to climb the ladder and like connect and like cling to anyone's, you know, coattail um, who seems like they could get you a leg up. I, I just don't think that's not how I move through the world. So I'm very intentional with how I build relationships with people. Yeah. And Jada, you're so genuine and you are not surface at all. That's one of the things I've really always noticed about you. Anytime I've had the opportunity to be around you, there's no, like, you know, a lot of people do small talk and I, for one, I, I'm really good at small talk. You, you have in depth conversations. You want that you, you, that's what I always see with you. Is that something that you intentionally do? Yeah. I, because I don't like small talk. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> so create the world that you want to live in. Right. Like I, I, like yeah. it, my brain just kind of like disengages on, on the light surface stuff. And so if, if I'm going to make the best use of my time, I want to go deep. And so I, I'm a really good best friend too, like behind the scenes, like if I'm in your corner or <laughs> if I'm your coach, like the way that I hold space for, for people is, is really deep and profound. And, and I, 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 I do feel that that is, I appreciate that reflection because that's exactly how I, I feel um, and how I, I show up. Cause it's the, it's the only way that I want to. Yeah. I, and I love that about you. Um, I, I have, uh, I watch people and learn from them, uh, people like you that I really admire. And that's something that I have picked up from you is, you know, cause I'm light and lighthearted a lot of times and I can do small talk, but I like to go deep too. Um, and you take that, the, every opportunity to go deep. And I want to start doing more of that. So thanks for demonstrating that to me and showing me that you don't have to be surface. You can go deep, even with new people yeah. um, that you're getting to know. So, yeah. And um, I think there's a gift yeah. in seeing the lightness too. Like that's, those are things my husband will, will push and challenge me. Right. Cause if I'm like, if we can't go deep, what's the point? Just, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we all have like our own growth edges of like, we might be missing being able to connect to someone or it doesn't have to always be so like heavy or serious or <laughs> profound, you know? So, um, I love that you're looking at like, Oh, how can I borrow traits that I'm inspired by and just watch and observe. And I, I think that's really cool. Yeah. Thanks for saying that. <clears throat> so Simple Green Smoothies had its own website and off it went with 30,000 Instagram followers. Yeah. And you're still this visionary. So how are you staying focused on this one thing? Did you start going bright, shiny object over here? Or were you really good at being focused on that? Yeah. So I, I, I think that's something that I did. I, like I have bright, shiny, you know, shiny object. Like I chase Oops. squirrels and see things, but I saw an opportunity here. And so I, we did go deep. And I, I remember when we launched the website, we were kind of a little all over the place, trying to pull some blogs from, um, from, from family sponge and leverage those. And I was like, for the next nine months, let's talk about nothing but green smoothies. If it doesn't have to do with green mm. smoothies, we don't like, cause we were kind of health overall and trying to like incorporate all of these things and like, oh, here's how to make, um, you know, do it yourself deodorant or toothpaste natural. You know, we're trying to kind of pulling in like, oh, this is a health, healthy lifestyle, right? Instead of like parenting, we'll just kind of remove that and make it that. And I was like, 
people are following us for the green smoothie recipes. So it was like health benefits of chia seeds, health benefits of hemp, um, you know, just sharing those green smoothie recipes. And so um, something that we did at the end, like in December, uh, we actually reached out to another um, health blog. They, they had a really big following on Facebook and I wanted to partner with them. I was like, hey, we can do the design, um, but uh, we wanted, we want to do a challenge with you. And they, they never replied to us. They never replied to our email. Mm-hmm. They just ignored us. Right. So it was like silent rejection. And, but we mm-hmm. had this idea to do this challenge, but we were kind of afraid to do it on our own. Like we felt like we needed somebody else, right. That we needed someone who had a bigger Facebook following. Instagram is still new. Who knows what that is, but we're like, Hey, we'll, we'll share it you with our Instagram following. And then we could share ours with your Facebook group. That was kind of the intent. And we really yeah. needed it where they could be sending everything. And we would just be kind of like curating and designing and putting it all together nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, So then we just went ahead and did it on our own. We did a challenge ourselves. And so January 1st, 2013, we had like a new year, new you green smoothie challenge. It was a 30 day green smoothie challenge. We were pulling ideas out of our booties because we had no idea what we were doing. We were making shopping lists like lot, like the night before it was supposed to go out like every Thursday. But, um, what happened was we had an email list of like 2000 email subscribers before the challenge. And we had this like 11, 13 page PDF, right? Like you gotta have your free, your free PDF opt-in to grow your email list. And so our 30,000 followers on Instagram, 2000 opted in for that PDF. Then we hosted our challenge and we grew, we doubled our Instagram from 30,000 to 60,000 followers. Wow. And we grew our email list from 2,000 to 30,000 email subscribers <gasps> on one, wow. one challenge. That's huge. Yeah. So that was like the like, oh, um, yeah. we were just like, we were so excited and also so exhausted because I had sure. this, <laughs> this policy Um, which is no comment left behind. And so Mm. anyone who engaged with us on Instagram, on Facebook, on our website comments, I would respond to every single one. Like I want every, every single person to be seen, um, to be acknowledged. And so that was really kind of building in that community building blueprint from the very beginning. And with that, we were just like, doubling, you know, almost like overnight, it felt like we had um, Jen's husband started commenting for us, like helping us with comments, because we were just like getting inundated, the same questions over and over again, where's my, where's my link, where's this, where's the shopping list, you know, just trying to figure all that stuff out. Um, And at the time, Mm -hmm. we were using MailChimp, which was it was free up until 2000. And then we had to start paying. (laughs) And we're like, oh, Uh how are we going to make money? Um, and I, re- I remember um, uh, Pat Flynn of Smart Passive Income. He had this mm-hmm. book called Ebooks the Smart Way. And it was his free opt in was like, just finish your ebook. Here's like, here's, <laughs> here's how much money you can make. And I, you know, I'd been thinking about this ebook since 2011, since I interned with my aunt. Like, first you start an e-zine newsletter, then you sell an ebook, and then you make a million dollars. But I was hemming and hawing over the ebook for, for just try like there was so much resistance to to that piece of the puzzle to just like put an offer out there and um, mm-hmm. you're writing something you're like we're not authors we don't know what we're doing we're just like okay we just put this together and people are gonna they're gonna give us two stay-at-home moms like money um so I remember what <laughs> and we ha- I had spent so many months writing this ebook right for like healthy green smoothies for kids or families or moms you know like and what people were saying while we were in the challenges, how can we get these shopping lists? Like, I'll pay for you. I'll pay for these shopping lists. Like, and it, we were like, no, Ooh. but we're sending them to you for free. Like it's in your email inbox. And what they wanted was it to be packaged, like to be convenient, right. to be visit, you know? And so what we decided to do was we pivoted again and we <laughs> threw away this ebook I'd been working on for so many, for so, so long. And we basically packaged our 30 day green smoothie challenge with like recipe cards, the shopping list, health benefits of chia seeds, just kind of putting it all into one PDF. And we were so scared to charge for it. Cause we like, we just did it for free. 
Um, and I remember reading something from like Ramit Sethi and like, I, I just knew I'm like $5, we'll sell it for $5, you know? And that's like a, this digital thing. And we sold it for $5 and we made $8,000 in seven days at the end of the 30 day green smoothie challenge. And so with that money, one, we validated an idea. <laughs> Two, we were able to pay off all the money that we had spent in on the parenting blog. We kind of like cleaned the slate for us so we were no longer in the red. And then we reinvested those few extra thousand dollars. We actually invested it into an, an online education course and into a our first VA. Um, someone <laughs> someone awesome. that we help us because I was like, if I have to respond to someone about their PayPal payment didn't go through again or they're <laughs> like where's my link this like I was like I will pull my hair out and I, I will just throw in the towel like I like because I'm not mm -hmm. a rinse and repeat person as you know as visionary founders <laughs> we don't want to do admin tax tasks that you have to go over and over again and so for me I think that's something that I'm really good at is like I'm, I'm not going to like doing this. If I keep doing it this way, something has to change. And so that's where we invested in our, our first VA, um, who was a friend of, of Jen's and still with the company to this day, which is pretty dang oh, wow. awesome. Like it's like employee it. number one, you know? <laughs> 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 um, and so, yeah, that really, that's kind of like uh, we made money that was exciting, validated the idea, and we reinvested the overflow back into the business. So um, I want to kind of take this full circle just for a second, because when you first started talking about you and your husband um, moving to Hawaii and starting this business, you said that um, we didn't have degrees or anything. And what you're really giving us here, Jada, this is better than any college course I've ever taken. This information you're sharing right here. The information you learned and the information you put together and that you're now sharing very succinctly and powerfully. This is going to help people, in my opinion, more than a college course. So I just want you to know. It's very, it is that good, that powerful. And thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> Cause a lot of people still think I have nothing against education. I have education myself, but it doesn't make or break you in this industry. Having the vision, having the ability to move forward and those three P's you've been talking about proactive, persistent pivoting, that's going to, that's going to take you where you need to go. Yeah. And thank you sure. so much for that. Yeah. I could talk to you all day long, but we have to wrap up here. So could you jump forward and tell us anything more you want to tell us about how Simple Green Smoothies wrapped up and then what you're doing today? Yeah. Because you're not doing Simple Green Smoothies anymore. Yeah. So, um, you know, Simple Green Smoothies, that that was kind of our, our, our breakout year, 2013, right? The overnight success. Um, yeah we ended up everybody's <laughs> like look what they did overnight <laughs> yeah and you know a couple of challenges later we would end up doing a launch where we generated eighty six thousand dollars in 10 days my husband was able to quit his job of 13 years um you know uh I, you know as i said we, we grew our following to over three hundred fifty five thousand email subscribers um 300,000 Facebook. Uh, I've never heard of that many email subscribers. I haven't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think it's because of my internship. Like I just knew the power of email um, and that yeah. we could, we could really grow a powerful, like not just grow a community on a social media platform, but make sure we get them on our email list because the connection and the value sharing and the generosity happens on social media, which I like to call your dance floor, but the, the sales, the transactions actually happen in your bedroom, which is your email inbox. And so we needed to make those things work together. Um, so yeah, that company um, did amazingly well. And I got to this place where I was more excited talking about the behind the scenes, sharing these stories of like, how did you do that? How did you grow your community? Um, and I just I became swept in this world of, of sharing kind of more of the the way to build a business, the way to build an authentic community online. And so my heart actually 
2013, when we had that big launch, I was already wanting to help other people create some of that same magic in their own lives. And so I would have to toss and, and have this tension for the next several years before I actually exited my company in 2016. Um, so I continued mm. to grow that company. We got a traditionally published book um, by the same name, Simple Green Smoothies, that has over 1,300 five-star reviews on Amazon. It's been in Barnes & Noble. Wow. Um, just so many great, amazing things. And, and my business partner went on to write a second book, which I helped write the book proposal for, but I walked away from that book deal because I knew that wasn't what I wanted to be known for. It wasn't what my heart wanted to, to write next. Um, it was one of the hardest breakups because <laughs> I haven't had to break. Oh my gosh, that it. had to be. Yeah, it was, it, was, wow. it was really, really a very challenging time to, to make that leap of something that I was also, so many people knew me as the green smoothie girl and like, who am I without that community? Who am I without that business? Um, so I had a, a lot, basically an identity crisis, but I just knew my heart had to go into this next thing. And I knew that there was a book that I wanted to write. And excitingly, I got a book deal um, with Harper Business. And, and so I have a book that will be coming out um, for women entrepreneurs on, you know, how we build, how we wear many hats <laughs> and have to do things. Oh, I love it do uh, things a little bit differently. You know, there's extra societal pressures on us as women building meaningful businesses, but also still having the energy and the presence to, to live meaningful lives um, that we don't compromise our health and our relationships in the process of building, you know, a big, beautiful business. And so that's what I'll be talking about. Um, that's what I talk about on the Lead with Love podcast is how do we make decisions from our heart that don't always make sense on paper. And that's what I'm a real advocate for is, is leading with love and making those decisions um, from that deeper knowing. Oh, wow. I love that. Do you have a title for the book yet? Or is that still in the process? I'm still, I mean, I have one, a working title, but I don't want to say okay. it yet because it could it Yeah, could yeah, I don't and, blame you. I wouldn't. <laughs> and iterate over time, but I, I feel pretty, I feel pretty strong and confidently about it. But, you know, I have someone like Jen in my corner and people that I'll be riffing with. Um, but yeah, I'll be excited to, um, to share the reveal of the title of the book cover, all that creative stuff that's, that's gonna, going to come. And, and it's a dream come true to be able to write a book in the nonfiction business space and, um, and to share this journey, this story that I've been even sharing with you now. That's really exciting. So anybody that wants to stay on top of what's happening with Jada's book that is going to be published through Harper Business um, coming out in 2022, make sure that you listen to Lead with Love podcast. She's going to be talking about it on there. Where else can they connect with you? Yeah, over at jadasolner.com. And I have lots of wait lists and things for people who want to get in on the early bonuses and behind the scenes book tour and all of that stuff. So um, yeah, that'll be super exciting. I'm definitely, going, as soon as we're done here, I'm going there. I'm signing up. I want to be part of this. I want to see everything that you do um, because you a lead with love, um, business from your heart. All of that resonates with me so much. And uh, if you can't tell, I'm a huge fan of yours. So um, I know that you also, um, do you call it coaching? Uh, do you coach yeah, I, founders? I, yeah, I do. You know, I, I like to call it mentorship, but it's, it's, there we go. I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I wear so many hats in the way that I support founders because sometimes it's business therapy. Sometimes it's team strategy building. Um, you know, I, I really walk the range. It's really founders who are in a high season of growth and expansion, and they don't want to burn out themselves or their team in the process of building. And they also still want to have time for what matters most, right? For their, their lives and their families and their health and all of those pieces. So I'm a really integrated um, business mentor and in, in helping helping my founders do that. And one of the, my favorite ways to guide my, my clients is through 
in-person retreats. So when we get to get back in person, I cannot wait um, to be able to just allowing founders to step away from their day-to-day responsibilities and putting fires out to actually, you know, we're visionaries. And so we need to think, we need to dream and we need to be around other visionaries that are kind of pulling us up to what is possible and being able to expand our vision without losing sight of, of, what really matters and the most meaningful relationships that you have. Yeah. So any of you interested in learning more about working with Jada, FYI, uh, and this is a secret, so don't share it with anybody else. (laughs) She's full right now. (laughs) Her mentorship, her coaching program, uh, how she advises uh, founders, that's full right now, but she does have a wait list. So if you... Um, want to work with Jada at some point, make sure you go to her website, get on her wait list, learn more about her because we have only touched the tip of the iceberg here. <laughs> Jada, anything else you want to share with our listeners, any place else that, that you want to have them follow you um, or is um, it all on your website? Yeah, I would say it's all on my website. I mean, I'm, I'm on Instagram at Jada Selner and Facebook, but my primary dance floor is definitely the podcast and getting on to, to my newsletter because I like to have more intimate conversations with, with my audience more than social media. Um, but yeah, that's that's another place that people can can poke around, but I spend most of my time supporting my clients, writing books and and showing up for my family. So exciting. I can't wait to watch the process of your book come together and then hold one in my hand. Yeah. Um, and I'll be signing up for all those extras because I want the extras. Yes. <laughs> and I know those things go fast. Yes. So, <laughs> all right. Well, Jada, thank you so much for spending this time with me today. I feel like I have just learned an incredible amount from you. And I really appreciate you speaking so in depth and sharing your insights. Yeah, it was great connecting with you, Kathy. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. (laughs) 